So for somebody like you, who was obviously at the time in the mid nineties, you know, actually in the early nineties, thinking about it, that you were super young. And then you have this person who's already a legendary figure in Tupac reading your poetry and your rhymes and thinking like, damn, yo, you like, you are super fucking talented. So what was that like for you when Pac actually discovered your work and gave you feedback on it the first time? It was all the validation I needed mm -hmm. to do something that I already knew I was going to do. Mm -hmm. Because I loved hip hop so much and I loved writing and creating so much. I was going to do this whether a Tupac existed or not. This was going to be something that I that I did. I, I knew at a very early age this is what I wanted to do and we literally had dreams about it. I would wake up dreaming, you know what I mean? Like, true story. I would dream that I met Marley Maul, hmm. you know what I mean, on the train and rap for him and he put me in the juice crew. Mm -hmm. literally yeah. used to have this dream and I had it more than once. Mm -hmm. And so this was something that I was going to do regardless. So when Pac said, yo, you got talent, all you got to do is graduate high school and you can come to Oakland and, you know, let's do it. That was all I needed. Mm -hmm. That was it. That's dope, man. I, always thought, I already thought he was, you know, an amazing um, rapper. Mm, yeah. So, for an amazing rapper to tell you you dope, that's sometimes that's all you need. Yeah, man. And that, so that's going to be my next question. So in terms of your perspective now, why did you value Pac so much before you even knew him? What about his rhymes? Or what about, like, let's say your favorite songs of his drew you to him? Well, my journey with Tupac kind of goes before we were even in the music industry, before mm -hmm. he was in the music industry. Um, he just, uh, when I finally began to hear his music, um, it was a different, it was a different voice. Mm -hmm. It was a different tone. His, his, the texture of his voice was different. And, um, even when we were kids, I think his, you know how your voice changes when you're going through puberty? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pac's voice kind of never did that. He kind of had that voice, you know what I mean? His whole life, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And, and so when you hear it on beats and you hear it on hip hop and like just to know that he was uh he was on the same page that I was on and loving hip hop and wanting to contribute to it was um you know amazing for me you know what I mean because I really didn't have any other family members that were really like into being the artist we all loved hip hop but there was no other person in in the family at that point that was really trying to pursue it as a life, a lifestyle and a career. So it was just, you know, great to know that somebody I, I've known most of my life was into hip hop and, you know, he was actually dope. Yeah. You know what I mean? And when he started, he wasn't as good as he was going to be. Yeah. I mean, did you guys see that though? And thinking of just the group together, the outlaws, like not even just Paca singularly, because I think that was a little bit more obvious. But when you guys started Drama Sidle, was there a thought of like, hey, this is where this could go? All we had was him. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like all we had to, to gauge was really him, because that's the only person we knew that actually got a record deal, made it into the music industry, even did a movie mm -hmm. and had a actual career in this business and so whatever he did let us know we could do mm -hmm. you know yeah, what so, I mean so I mean essentially yeah yeah yeah, so essentially, like, he, yeah, he inspired you guys. And again, he inspired you with the confidence to know that you guys can be a part of the group. So, yeah, when he dis when he created Drama Seidel and again, what became the Outlaws, did he have a particular vision for it at the time, like more long term? Or was it more like, hey, let's put this together and see where it goes? There was a there was a couple of different visions, you know what I mean? And um, everything I can't get into into detail, because obviously we have some projects coming that, you know what I mean, we got we got to save stuff for. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, that drama side was one vision. There was several different visions that led up to the outlaws and the outlaws being the thing that, that stuck. Mm -hmm. Drama side was just one of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how, why did you guys end up changing the name to the outlaws? It's a, that's a famous story, a mm -hmm. famous Hussein fatal story. Mm hmm you know we were we were the young thugs we were drama -cidal. we were you know what i mean a lot yep. of different things and, you know um the outlaws just made the most sense and you know 
rest in peace to Hussein Fatal. He was the one to be able to identify that. Yeah. And can you tell us a little bit about that? How did that happen? I don't want to go into detail about that. I got to <laughs> save that. I got to save that story. All right. I got you, man. Yeah. And then so with the, okay. So then with all of the people, with all of the outlaws, right? So we have Big Psych, we had Hussein Fatal, Young Noble. So how was all of that put together? How did Pac end up finding all of you guys? Um, As far as, you know, um, Tupac and Sykes relationship and how they met, um, because I wasn't there personally, I don't want to go into that because I, I might say something that's incorrect. Mm -hmm. I just heard stories about how they met. Yep. And so I'm going to leave that um, alone. As far as the outlaws is concerned, the outlaws kind of all knew each other at different stages of our, of our lives and was around each other at different stages of our lives before music came into the play. And the common denominator was um, Yafeo Gaddafi Fuller and Tupac Shakur. Mm -hmm. Those are the two common denominators. And um, we all have a connection to those two individuals. No, I got you, man. That's how the group came together. You know, of course, you've heard the story. Pac was in jail. He went to put together a super group. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, Action, you shall receive. <laughs> you know what I mean. And, and you know, you get, you get, you get the group, and you get the group, and um, you know, you get everything else that comes along with it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, is is there a part of you that still thinks about what it would have been like had he started Machiavelli Records and you guys been his first artist? Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I I kind of um, you know, I I don't like to stay in the past too much, but fucking amazing you know what i mean the, the the shit that we were um embarking on and the shit that we were working on and where we could have took it sky's the limit 